After being reanimated by an eccentric doctor, a woman follows her natural curiosity, guiding her on an exciting journey of self-evolution. In London, a woman named Victoria leaps off a bridge to end her life. Afterward, she unexpectedly falls into the care of a deformed yet exceptional surgeon, Godwin Baxter, who calls her Bella. Strangely, the lady behaves like a fetus in a grown-up's body, displaying unstable coordination and limited speech. She gets easily amused and claps when Godwin's burp bubble bursts during mealtime. After breakfast, the surgeon heads to the medical school, where he works as an instructor. Among his students is Max McCandles, who admires his research. After class, the lecturer speaks with the student, asking him to become his assistant on a project. That afternoon, Godwin brings Max to his house to meet Bella, who's busy dropping plates for fun. When the surgeon introduces her to the visitor, she suddenly smacks his face and happily turns around. To explain Bella's odd behavior, the surgeon reveals that the woman suffered a brain injury, resulting in her mental and physical ages being out of sync. He then reveals that his assistant's task is to monitor her daily progress. Upon hearing this, Bella expresses excitement. When Max notices she is urinating on the floor, Godwin summons Mrs. Prim to clean up the mess. The assistant observes his subject's progress the following day. He discovers her dislike for kippers, interest in surgery, and compassion for Godwin's hybrid pets. Max reports these to the surgeon later, noting Bella's improving language but unstable coordination. The doctor commends his work and expects to see him the next day. Before leaving, Max asks about Bella's background, but the doctor avoids the question, emphasizing that the student's role is solely data collection. After listening to her bedtime story that night, the childlike woman inquires if the doctor is her dad, prompting him to lie that she's an orphan. Godwin fabricates a story, saying her parents passed away in a landslide and entrusted him with taking care of their daughter. Upon hearing this, Bella feels sorrow for her unfortunate situation and expresses appreciation for the surgeon. Soon, she falls asleep, and he covers her with a blanket. The following day, Max observes Bella and discovers her interest in learning about different places. She becomes curious about the world, prompting her to go to the rooftop to see the cityscape. As he monitors her, the assistant discovers a scar on her nape, making him curious. Bella then heads to the operating room informing Godwin that she wants to go outside. However, the surgeon declines her request, even though she insists Max take her. When she throws a tantrum, the doctor takes her to the woods with Max to calm her down. While inside the carriage, the curious woman peeks outside, prompting the surgeon to warn her of the world's dangers. Upon reaching the woods, the woman is captivated by the surroundings. She lies down on the fallen leaves, entranced by nature's beauty. However, when Max shows her a frog, she excitedly slaps his hands, inadvertently causing harm to the amphibian. Later, during a picnic with Bella and Max, Godwin senses a group of men approaching. He quickly invites everyone to leave, pretending that a storm is coming. While walking, Max asks why the surgeon scares his subject, sensing his odd overprotectiveness towards her. The doctor explains that Bella is part of an experiment, and he needs to control the conditions to ensure accurate results. Inside the carriage later, the childlike woman becomes upset when Godwin refuses her request to walk outside. When she attacks them, the surgeon resorts to sedating her to calm her down. Arriving at the house, Max carries the woman to her bed, and Mrs. Prim takes over to change her clothing. Curious about Bella's background, he searches Godwin's office for documents, only to discover an illustration of a brain replacement procedure. The confused assistant then confronts the surgeon about what he did to Bella, threatening to report him to the police if he doesn't reveal the truth. Godwin then confesses that he found Victoria's body in the river and brought it to his operating room. He knew nothing of the woman's life except that she chose to end it. When he realized she was pregnant, he decided to reanimate Victoria by replacing her brain with her child's brain. While the surgery was a success, the doctor admits that the patient has no clue of what was done to her. In the following days, Bella rapidly progresses and discovers self-pleasuring. She shares her learnings with Max, who educates her that such private activity is inappropriate in polite society. Later, the childish woman pushes her plate off the table, refusing dinner. She then excuses herself, leaving Max and Godwin in the room. The surgeon encourages his assistant to marry Bella, claiming he sees love between them. Confused by the proposal, Max confesses his feelings for the patient but hesitates, assuming Godwin is grooming her as a romantic partner. The doctor clarifies that he considers himself a father figure to Bella, as he is a eunuch. When Max agrees, 
The surgeon also proposes that the couple must remain to live with him post-marriage, promising that he'll handle the legal arrangements. Afterward, the assistant proposes to Bella in the backyard. The next day, Godwin invites Duncan Wedderburn for the marital agreement. Due to the strict contract, the lawyer becomes curious about Bella, thinking that the surgeon is imprisoning the woman. He soon finds the lady in the closet and allures her. Duncan secretly visits Bella that night and invites her to the rooftop. He shares his plan to free her from Godwin and invites her to travel the world, starting with Lisbon. Interested in the journey, Bella informs Godwin of her intention to run away with the lawyer, reasoning that the surgeon is restrictive of her. When the doctor assures her that she can travel with him and Max, she acknowledges that she'll still marry her fiancé but wants to prioritize her adventure with Duncan. When Godwin still declines, she threatens to hate him, prompting him to change his mind. Later, as Prim helps Bella pack her bags, Max attempts to stop her from leaving, reminding her of their engagement. Despite this, she insists on leaving with Duncan and promises to marry him when she returns. This upsets Max, who wants to confront the lawyer, but Bella sedates him before he can do so. After Max is unconscious, Godwin gives Bella emergency pocket money, which he keeps in her clothes. He then kisses her goodbye, wishing her a good trip. When the assistant confronts the surgeon for not stopping his fiancé, Godwin reasons that Bella has free will, assuring Max that she will be fine. After another steamy moment, an energetic Bella insists on going another round, but the lawyer insists to rest. While Duncan sleeps, she explores the town independently and discovers more about the world. She soon runs into a singing woman and an arguing couple. She also learns how to drink liquor, which makes her throw up. Returning to the hotel, Bella is scolded by Duncan, who advises her that it's dangerous to go out alone. In response, she assures him she's fine and invites him to engage in another physical moment. The next day, Duncan invites Bella to a formal dinner with his friends, Kitty and Gerald. During the meal, she impolitely spits her food onto her plate and makes an awkward remark about the lawyer's private parts, creating an uncomfortable moment. Suddenly, Bella is annoyed by a baby's cry, prompting her to rise and attempt to punch him. The lawyer quickly stops her and pulls her to a corner. He scolds her for her inappropriate social behavior and, with a tight grip on her arm, advises her to communicate with more polite words. The woman then informs him that her arm is hurting and smacks him. Afterward, she kisses him, leaving the lawyer confused by her mixed reactions. When they return to their table, Bella follows Duncan's advice to communicate pleasantly. However, lacking empathy, she overdoes it and inappropriately gives a compliment when Kitty speaks about her old father. The following day, Godwin receives a postcard from Bella, informing him of her activities in Lisbon. Max becomes concerned upon confirming that his fiancé frequently engages in physical activities with Duncan. Meanwhile, Bella finds joy in exploring the city alone. She soon learns to drink to the point of intoxication. Upon regaining consciousness, she returns to the hotel, where she finds Duncan upset with her frequent disappearances. Suddenly, an old lady approaches Bella, recognizing her as Victoria. However, she corrects her, stating her name. Later, in the lavish restaurant with Duncan, Bella shares her excitement about her recent discoveries. However, she is displeased with the lawyer's lack of support. Suddenly, their conversation is interrupted when the band plays music. Bella starts awkward movements as couples dance around her. Duncan immediately joins her on the dance floor to avoid misjudgment from the diners. Once back in their seats, the lawyer notices that Bella is blinking, discovering she's doing it for the man behind them. Jealous, Duncan rises and attempts to confront the stranger. At that moment, a couple invites Bella to dance in town. As she leaves the area with them, Duncan catches up and intervenes, leading to the woman becoming upset with him. Soon, they reconcile and passionately kiss in the hotel room. However, the lawyer becomes disappointed upon discovering that Bella had her inner thighs inked by another man. Duncan walks out and rushes to the bar, hitting his head on the counter out of frustration. Bella soon follows him, confused about his reaction. When she confirms her physical involvement with the skin artist, the lawyer cries, prompting the clueless woman to pat him on the back. Meanwhile, Godwin suddenly faints during his lecture, prompting Max to attend to him. When the surgeon awakens, the assistant suspects Bella's absence may have caused a state. However, the doctor points out that his creation is gone, and he must move on by starting another project, instructing Max to find another body. The following day, Duncan attempts to regain control of Bella by smuggling her onto a cruise ship. When she confronts him, he explains that he's bringing her on a new adventure. However, 
Bella feels disappointed, prompting her to lock herself in the bathroom. Later, while the lawyer is asleep, she leaves the cabin to explore the ship. The next morning, Duncan attempts to explain to Bella that he has abducted her out of love. Despite his explanation, she remains unconvinced and asks him to get her some ink for her postcard. While the lawyer is away, she ventures further and interacts with an older woman named Martha and a cynic named Harry. Later, Duncan interjects and appears to disapprove of Bella's attempt to make friends, which Harry immediately senses. Following this, the lawyer proposes to Bella, who refuses because Max is her fiancé. Learning about her engagement, he becomes confused because she ran away with him. In response, Bella explains that she only traveled with him for fun. This revelation makes Duncan upset and sad, prompting him to head to the casino. Meanwhile, Godwin and Max work on another experiment named Felicity, whose progress is slow during training. In the following days, Bella's intelligence rapidly increases as she starts reading books. She also listens to Martha and Harry's intellectual discussions. The older woman is optimistic, believing in the potential for society and people to improve, while the cynic points out that individuals are inherently cruel. Duncan interrupts their conversation, inviting Bella to return to their cabin. However, the woman declines and resumes to read, prompting him to throw her book overboard. Despite the lawyer's outburst, she insists on staying with her friends. After relaxing in the casino, Duncan returns to the cabin, attempting to allure Bella. However, she rejects his advances, mentioning she must meet with Martha. Upset, Duncan threatens to throw the older woman overboard, only for Bella to laugh at him when the crew takes him away. That night, Bella finds herself unable to sleep due to her racing mind. She then heads to Harry's cabin, confronting him for making her question things. The woman admits that she doesn't believe in the cynic's view that humans are innately cruel but confesses that he believes Duncan is, causing her to feel conflicted about thinking so. When Bella voices her desire to improve her character, Harry continues to convince her of people's innate cruelty. To illustrate his point, he invites Bella to explore Alexandria, where he shows her the needy people suffering in the slums. Witnessing this, Bella immediately feels distressed. Later, the devastated woman finds Duncan in bed, surrounded by his winnings. Thinking of those in need, she collects the lawyer's money, planning to give it to the less fortunate. She tries to return to Alexandria, but the crew stops her because the ship is about to cast off. The men volunteer to give the cash on her behalf, only to keep it for themselves. Following this, Bella encounters Duncan, who informs her they've been robbed. Tearfully, she admits that she took the money and gave it to the people in the slums, which upsets him. Soon, the captain informs them that they'll be put ashore at the next port because they have no money. Meanwhile, Godwin receives a postcard from Bella, sharing her realizations about the world. On their last day on the ship, Bella receives an apology from Harry, who admits that he liked to see her sad because he couldn't bear to see happiness in someone. Instead of getting upset, Bella becomes hopeful, realizing she can change the world because she now understands it. Bella and Duncan are thrown off in Marseille. They soon reach Paris, where they struggle to book a hotel because they have no money. Promising to help, the woman leaves the man to explore the city, only to meet Madame Swiney, who convinces her to work in a brothel. Bella then encounters her first client. After receiving her salary, she returns to Duncan, who is immediately disappointed with her courtesan job. Due to his lack of support, Bella calls it quits with the lawyer and promises to book him a passage back to London with Godwin's emergency money. This further upsets Duncan, who realizes they have some cash after all. Out of frustration, he takes the money and leaves her. With nowhere else to go, Bella returns to Madame Swiney, intending to secure employment to fund her education. At work, she soon realizes that the clients choose courtesans rather than vice versa. Later, after attending to another customer, she is visited by Toynette, a colleague who gives her a pamphlet about socialism. Equipped with new knowledge, Bella complains to Madame Swiney about the lineup system, questioning the need to engage with customers she finds distasteful. She proposes that courtesans should be free to choose their clients, which Toynette supports. As a result, Swiney speaks privately with Bella in her office, explaining that it would be detrimental to the business if the courtesans were allowed to choose their customers. Swiney then introduces Bella to her grandchild, stressing the impact on the baby if the brothel fails. She urges the courtesan to work hard and advises her to embrace positive and negative experiences to understand life and herself better. This statement inspires Bella, who starts to engage with several customers, even though she finds distasteful. Soon, her hard work pays off, allowing her to afford an education. 
she enrolls herself in medical school alongside Toynette. While studying, she continues to work in the brothel, encountering a father who seeks her assistance to provide a sensual lesson for his sons. The boys then sit down to take notes while their dad and the courtesan demonstrate the physical act. One morning, Duncan, who hadn't returned to London, approaches Bella in the city, inviting her to return with him. However, she declines, reminding him that their time together has ended. Meanwhile, Max continues to monitor Felicity's progress. Although she has learned to paint, her language skills remain minimal. Suddenly, Godwin walks in, asking his assistant to remove the cysts around his tumor. During the operation, the surgeon informs Max that his days are numbered. As his last wish, he wants to see Bella, tasking his assistant to track her down. In the brothel, Swiney delivers a hot chocolate to Bella, who's in a depressive state. The older woman explains that the courtesan is experiencing her dark period, which she must endure to reach enlightenment. Following this, Bella spends a physical moment with Toynette, who notices her pregnancy scar. While the courtesan corrects her that it came from an accident, she wonders if Godwin was telling the truth. Upon receiving a letter from Duncan, the surgeon tasks Max with tracking down the lawyer, who has been institutionalized. Introducing himself as Bella's fiancé, the man demands to know her whereabouts, leading to a brawl before he obtains the information. Bella soon learns from Max's letter that Godwin's life is ending, prompting her return to London. Visiting the ailing surgeon, she confronts him if she had been pregnant, prompting him to reveal the truth that he had transplanted her baby's brain into her. Discovering the illustrated procedure, Bella confronts Max for not telling her about it. However, Max admits that he was unsure if she would understand. Soon after, she discovers the scar on her nape, making her realize that an operation indeed occurred. Upon meeting Felicity, Bella is shocked to learn that Godwin made a similar experiment, prompting Max to explain that they missed her. Due to the revelations, Bella becomes curious about her past identity and decides to visit the bridge where she had leaped off. When she returns home, she sternly confronts Godwin, accusing him of being responsible for her creation. However, the surgeon reasons Bella is ultimately a product of her choices and experiences. Despite her anger and confusion, she forgives him and reveals her plan to become a doctor soon. He is delighted by this, advising her to be a compassionate professional. The next day, Bella and Max discuss their engagement. He admits it happened when she was younger, so technically, there's no bind. However, despite her past as a courtesan, he confesses that he's still captivated by her. When Max acknowledges Bella's freedom to do anything with her body, the woman appreciates his openness and asks him to marry her, which he accepts. Soon, the ceremony takes place. However, Victoria's husband, General Alfie Blessington, interrupts the couple's wedding. It turns out that Duncan had investigated Bella's past identity, which led him to find her real spouse. The lawyer convinces the general that Godwin and Max took advantage of his wife, who can't remember anything. Curious about her former life, Bella decides to go with Alfie and return to their mansion. While having dinner with him, she learns that Victoria intended to end her life because she disliked the baby. She also learns that she and the man share a love for cruelty. The general forgives Bella for working as a courtesan and ending their unborn child. Hearing this, she asserts that she hasn't wronged him as she doesn't know him. Believing she has amnesia, he advises her to stay inside until she recovers. Interpreting Alfie's restrictions as imprisonment, Bella asserts her freedom, but he threatens to shoot her if she leaves. The next day, the woman attempts to flee the mansion but finds the gates locked. Upon returning inside, she overhears Alfie and a surgeon discussing their plan to mutilate her. Later, Bella informs the general of her intention to leave, understanding that Victoria ended her life because of him. When Alfie asserts ownership over her, she explains she's not Victoria anymore, as Godwin reanimated her with their child's brain. Despite this, the man points a gun at her. When he offers her a sedative, she throws the drink in his face, causing him to shoot his foot accidentally. Bella then seizes the handgun and soon brings the wounded general to Godwin's home. She asks for Max's assistance to remove the bullet from Alfie's foot and perform a brain transplant. After the surgery, the couple stays beside Godwin. Before the surgeon's final breath, he kisses Bella, expressing gratitude for the richness she brought to his life. Following the doctor's demise, Bella takes charge of Godwin's mansion. She is also studying to become a surgeon with the support of Toynette and Max Mrs. Prim stays with them to care for Felicity, who can now follow simple instructions like bringing water for the goat-brained Alfie.